Hello, hello, hello. Hi, it's Pete Reed from Illuminate ICT. Yesterday at the Whittington Computer Club, uh, Mark uh, Lawrence did a fantastic introduction, a reminder of some other bits and pieces and the basic language of computing. Um, and Mark can be contacted on www.hometechtuition.co.uk. So let's have a look at some of the things that we looked at and we refreshed. The first one was drives, files and folders. There on the corner there is the filing cabinet that sits in my office. I'm sat staring at it now. It is the bane of my life trying to keep that organised. On the other side there, we've got the hard drive from my laptop. And all my files and folders that I work with on a daily basis uh, are, are all on there. Each drawer in my filing cabinet, or my filing cabinet has got drawers, and each drawer can have a different name. So I've got a filing cabinet called C colon, I've got one beneath called admin, and I've got another two drawers. Their names are not material because their content tends to just acquire all sorts of rubbish. Uh, my laptop has got three drives. A C drive, a D drive, and an E drive. And again, I can actually give them names as well if I so desire. Now, each drawer on my filing cabinet has got a set of folders. And as you can see, it's a wonderfully organised set of uh, system. And each drive on my computer has got a set of folders. Um, it looks a little bit tidier, thanks to the electronics. Each folder can hold files, but you can also put a folder into a folder. So, for example, there's the bank statements folder that uh, is sticking out of the banking file uh, or the banking folder. And there's all sorts of other documents inside of there that, uh, that will all make up that single file. Each folder holds files on a computer and I can also put a folder into a folder making a subfolder and indeed I could carry on having a subfolder of a subfolder if I so wanted to however I tend not to go too deep because otherwise I can never find anything anywhere. Moving files around is so much more easy on a laptop or an electronic device so, for example, if I just want to move my entire file system, uh, I could just pick my laptop up and move it. So I can go and sit in the house with my laptop and I've moved all of my files with me. I could pop down to the coffee shop and sit there supping coffee with all my files with me. Or I could put them onto memory sticks or I could put them onto CDs or I can put them onto all sorts of different ways of moving the files around. Moving files by uh, moving hard documents, moving paper documents, can be a complete nightmare. Just moving that document into my new office was a uh, moving my filing cabinet into my new office was a complete nightmare on its own. And indeed, I can remember in the old days struggling with heavy sort of um, briefcases or whatever. Now it's very very straightforward. I just carry a laptop. Creating a file is fairly straightforward as well. A file is simply, is simply something that's been created by a program such as a word processor. So if I'm using Microsoft Word or I'm using um, Google Docs or I'm using OpenOffice or LibreOffice or any type of word processor, it will create me a document. That document is a file. If I'm using a digital camera, when I take a digital image, it creates a file. When I'm using a spreadsheet, it creates a file. So anything that I'm working with, any program that creates an output, it will generally be a file that I could use. Now, a file is then stored in a folder. And it's a good idea to have your folders organized so that you can go and find them. And the way I do it is I've got a file, uh, a folder called customers. Underneath my customers folder, I've then got each customer has got their own folder. And that means that when I store a file into each customer, it means that if that customer calls, I can find their information quickly and easily, and it makes it look like I am efficient. Files and folders can be copied, moved to a new computer or device. And indeed, I would recommend that uh, a sensible copying to all external devices for backup purposes or whatever is a good thing. So let's have a quick look at the mouse to click or not to click. Well, on a computer, a mouse can be used for pointing. So here is my mouse. If I point to something on my computer, we can see that it's moving around and I could point to the mouse in the corner. I could point to the title. Yeah, and so I can actually point. Hovering is when you place the cursor on top of something. 
and it can sometimes change the cursor or indeed it can sometimes change what you're pointing at. So as you can see I am hovering over that mouse and the cursor as you can see is actually changed to a four-way arrow. So that means that I could do something with that particular item. I've got left click which selects an item so if I left click onto that mouse as you can see that mouse has now been selected it's got the box around it that says I've now selected it. Double click would open it. Now um, I don't think double click is going to do a great deal here. It's changed the boundaries so that would allow me to actually carry on doing some trimming for that image if I wanted to. Other times uh, a double click would actually launch uh, a program uh, or, or do something like that. Right click tells me about my options. So if I right click on that image as you can see what I've actually got now is I've got some options so I can cut, copy, paste, uh, I could change the order, I can rotate it, I could sense it on the page. So I can do all sorts of other things. So the right click gives me a command menu, usually when I'm actually working on something. Ooh, let me uh, click outside of there. Now, when we want to play with the internet, the first thing we need to do is to have a browser. Now, a web browser helps us to browse the web. What a wonderful sentence. All it means is that if I want to go online, I need a program of some description that will enable me to do so. And that program is called a web browser. Now, there's all sorts of different web browsers out there. So there's Chrome. Yep, Chrome's a browser. Firefox. Yep, Firefox is a browser. Internet Explorer. Yep, that's a browser. Opera. Yep, that's a browser. Safari. Yep, that's a browser. Um, there's all sorts of different browsers out there. And different people will actually have different ones that they like. Now, which browser should you be using? Well, to be honest, there is not a lot of difference between the various browsers. It will be subtleties such as the way that they're actually laid out. Um, and indeed, for some advanced users, they may well have different add-ons that they use for different purposes. So again, it can depend what you're trying to achieve as to which is the best browser. Now, I know for a fact that people will be screaming that yes, such and such is the best browser or I think so and so is the best browser. Well, have a play and see, and make your own mind up and if you think it's the best browser, then you're probably right and leave it like that. Most browsers or all common browsers will have a address bar and the address bar allows you to type in the address of where you want to go to on the web. So therefore, if you wanted to go to uh, the BBC, you could type www.bbc.co.uk. If you wanted to go to Mark's site, then you could type www.hometechtuition.co.uk. And again, it would take you straight there. The problem is, of course, that knowing that you've actually got um, an address, it means that you can get straight there. But if you don't know where you're going, then you need to find a way of actually finding that information. But before we move on, let's just say one thing about browsers. It's important that you keep your browser up to date. Usually when you install your browser, it will say, shall I automatically update? And the answer should be yes, because you want your browser to update on a regular basis. So it keeps you safe from possible viruses, malware or other dodgy stuff. And indeed, you may often find that if you've been downloading programs, uh, especially uh, software from the Internet, then you may find that suddenly you've acquired all sorts of other add-ons into your browser, such as uh, additional toolbars, additional search bars, or that Google is no longer your home page or whatever. So again, keep your browser secure and keep it safe. Now on to search engines. A search engine helps you to find the stuff on the web that you're searching for. Now, a search engine, to do this, it crawls the web, hence the term spider, yeah, and the spider crawls the web and creates an index of all the pages and the content on the web. So that when you type a search phrase in, it will try to find the best content based on your search. Now, what that means is that um, it will only work with sites that it has, that it has indexed, and it also means that different search engines, because they use different spiders and they crawl and they have different ways of working it out, may provide you with slightly different results. 
Now, the most common search engines are Google, Bing, and Yahoo. And again, to be honest, um, it doesn't really matter which one you use because they will all produce search results. I tend to use Google because I also tend to use Google Docs and all sorts of other Google programs. Um, uh, Windows 10, I'm playing about with using Bing because that's the that's the uh, the, the default search engine on there. Um, and to be honest, I don't think I've used Yahoo. I don't think I've used Yahoo this century. So to be honest, I've never really tried it. But hey, it's one of the big ones. So by all means, give it a play and see what you get. So a browser lets you access the internet and a search engine helps you to find things on, on the internet. So all you've got to do is keep calm and search for it. And if you don't get the search results the first time, then modify what you've typed in and try again. It's all very wonderful and straightforward. Now, if you've got any questions on this brief recap of drives and files and folders and mice and browsers, search engines, etc., then drop me an email at askpeterquestion at gmail.com, type something underneath, or then I go on, go on to hometechtuition.co.uk and, uh, and drop Mark a line and see how he can help. Okay, so there we go. Thank you very much. I hope you found that useful. And hey, I look forward to talking to you later. Cheers. Bye.